Welcome everyone to the University of New Brunswick Reds Women's Volleyball Town Hall Get Together. Thank you all for attending and for allowing me to get to know some of you, as well as giving me the opportunity to share some things about myself when it comes to sport and life in general. Wherever you may be, if it's afternoon or evening, just welcome. Um, I will not and refuse to take, uh, sorry, I, I will not and refuse to take away any spotlight from the players of this program and find it somewhat challenging to talk about myself, but I feel this an important night for you to understand the person who will be leading your former team, the program and school that you love, not to mention who will be working with some of your daughters day in and day out for the next one to five to six years. So again, I've made some notes, hopefully you don't mind me reading off a bit of a script. Um, but uh, the next couple of slides will kind of introduce myself as well as some of our graduating players, as well as uh, returning players and, and current recruits and whatnot. But um, as a player, um, I was fortunate enough to uh, win a couple CCAA national championships uh, with Red Deer College in 95 and 96. Um, one of the national championships, uh, again, amazing memories, um, took place in Truro, Nova Scotia. So I have been out to the Maritimes on a number of occasions. Um, all volleyball related uh, to, for that matter. Also toured out to uh, University of New Brunswick um, when I was coaching the UBC men's team as well. Um, so as a player, two national championships um, with Red Deer College and fortunate enough to win a national championship at my alma mater where I received my education degree at the University of Alberta in 97, as well as a national championship bronze in 99. Um, as a coach, uh, again, extremely fortunate enough to be able to coach both college and university. Um, going back to my roots at uh, Red Deer College, winning the national championship in 2001 and the CIS uh, at that time, now U Sport National Championship at the University of Alberta in uh, 2002 and a national silver in 2003. So. Along with that, uh, I've also had some national team experience, been involved with uh, on both the men's and the women's side, coaching the head coaching and assistant coaching the junior national men's team in the early 2000s and mid 2000s, uh, up to currently being involved with the senior women's national team, most currently the 2017 to 2019 seasons. Um, just in this last kind of prep towards qualifying for the Olympics, which unfortunately we did not do, uh, but we had some amazing results. So over those years, I've been able to uh, be fortunate enough to attend a couple world championships as well as tours across the world, um, being fortunate enough that way. So um, I, my, my wife's name is Kim, and I'm the father of two young children, a 13-year-old son named Noah and an 11-year-old daughter named Secret. want to briefly just kind of touch base on some of our uh, graduating players. Our first, Julie Demerit. I'm sure most of you, uh, if you are returning, are you, if you're a returning supporter or fan of the program, you understand that Julia has been uh, a major computer, uh, contributor over the past five years. Um, stats tell all the tale, CIA, uh, AUS all-rookie team, whatnot. Um, from my experience, just watching old video clips, she's gonna be dearly missed in the middle. Uh, and we wish her all the best as she moves forward onto new parts of her life. Uh, Cameron, Cameron and I have had quite a few talks over the past couple, couple months since I've been hired and a uh, pretty special individual. I know that she's given a lot to this program, even though that her stats may not show that. Um, she's been, she's had her share of injuries, which is, kept her off the floor and, and uh, kept her being maybe a more of a contributor to the team, but at the same time, her attitude and her, her um, uh, dedication to the team does not go noticed. We wanna wish Cameron uh, very uh, well. Um, she, we've talked a lot over the last couple of weeks, like I mentioned in regards to the next stages in her life. And as much as she loves volleyball, um, she's been accepted into chiropractic school, which is just phenomenal for her. We're so happy for her and wish her all the best. Um, as she moves on to new parts of her life. Um, I don't know how, she, how excited she is about moving to Toronto, but uh, at the same time, we want to wish her well. And uh, another, 
athlete that I'm sure a lot of you that are returning to the program know, um, and that's Kristen Burns, um, has played four years with the program. Again, stats speak for themselves. Uh, AUS Rookie of the Year in 2016, as well as uh, All-Stars in 19 and 20. Um, but uh, as much as we want to wish her well with her graduation, we want to welcome Kristen back as she got into uh, she got into the uh, grad uh, program that she wanted to at uh, UNB. So she uh, she's excited to be back, and we're excited to have her back. So um, she's been instrumental in kind of helping me kind of get comfortable and get to know some of the players, and I've been able to pick her brain about a couple things and. Um, I know most of you probably know how amazing of an individual she is, and I hope she's going to continue to uh, to grow with us in her in her final year of eligibility. Getting on to some of the returning Reds, um, some of these athletes. Well, I've met all the athletes, um, been able to kind of open conversations with them, but with some of them, I've been actually been able to watch them train virtually, which has been really neat for me. Um, sisters Catherine and Emma Burns. Um, from, from Fredericton, uh, Kristen Burns, who we just kind of spoke about, uh, Caitlin Chapman, a libero going into her second season. Uh, Kelsey Ducard from Alberta, another libero. Olivia Algersma from another Albertan from Barhead, going into her first season. So again, she was in school this past year, but because of the pandemic, uh, she was just able to train and which, which is, I feel so, as much as it was probably challenging for the athletes, it's somewhat um, advantageous for them to be able to get a year of kind of training under their belt. Um, again, I don't think Olivia was in Fredericton the entire year, but the time that she was there, um, she was able to train with the team. And Paige Leto, again, somebody who uh, has been a major help for me, a fourth year setter going into her fifth year of setting, coming off knee surgery, um, she's been working extremely hard and been, has been a major clog in helping uh, myself in the recruiting process of some of the new athletes that you're going to be meeting either later on in this presentation and in the future on the floor. Uh, Bailey Lemieux, another Fredericton uh, product, fourth year outside hitter. Katie McDonald from St. John's, Newfoundland. And Madeline Mills, outside hitter, second season, who I've been able to watch train in the last, uh, last number of months. A huge recruiting class, uh, again, put together, you know, in speaking with Coach Biggs and Director of Athletics, John uh, Richards, I'm uber excited about welcoming this talented group of freshmen um, from all across the country, as you can see, uh, to Fredericton and to UNB. So very talented group. Um, I've been able to kind of search up and kind of be able to request and see some videos from, from each of them. Um, and I'm, as much as I don't know uh, that much about them, I'm super excited to be working with them and kind of moving forward as a, as a group. And I know that the, uh, that the uh, current group is, is uh, as excited as I am in welcoming them to the fray. So again, I'm not, uh, I'm not overly used to uh, doing a town hall or being the focus of attention. Um, this virtual background makes it look like I don't have any hair, which is a little concerning, but we'll kind of go with that. I can't, I can't hear all of your laughter if there's any laughter or snickering or whatever. But um, again, I'm going to try and touch base on a lot of things. Um, I want to touch a little bit more on my background and kind of the person who I am. And then uh, I know I, I want to thank you for your uh, pre-registration and your questions that you had for me. I hope to, uh, oh, I will answer all of them, if not in my talk right now. Um, if I miss something, be sure to please ask them in the open forum. But um, just to get a little bit my my own background, um, I feel as if I'm from the Maritimes, I'm from the Maritimes of the Prairies, if that makes sense. Um, I'm originally from Brandon, Manitoba. My parents immigrated from Germany in 1954 to Brandon. Um, I'm the youngest of four children, and if you ask my siblings, they'd probably say that I was probably overly spoiled, which I really struggle with that. I don't know how someone's spoiled wearing their two sisters' hand-me-down jeans and button-up shirts with, later on, you find out that those button-up shirts are called blouses. Uh, but anyways, um, I am the first one to express and kind of mention that I feel that I've been so lucky to be able to... Uh, um, uh, experience the things that I've been able to experience and been able to do. Sports has been a major part of my life. Um, growing up with a speech impediment, uh, my way of coping was through competition. 
Not being able to talk creates its own challenges. Uh, I couldn't always compete with my peers in the classroom, but I could on the field of play. And that was something that gave me confidence in my life. I love to play, I love to compete, but more than these two things, I hated to lose. I was a suck, I was a crybaby, I was a poor loser. All things that made me the person that I am today. Probably one thing that I'm most proud of is how much I've learned, how much I've changed and been able to, to, to adapt and grow from my experiences through both the good times and the bad, the successes and the failures. I still don't take very, uh, I, I still don't take losing very well, but I think I'm kind of pretty much over being the big suck and the, and the, and the crybaby. Having a young family, as I mentioned, a 13 year old boy and 11 year old girl, coaching my, my own kids over the past number of years and everything under the sun puts a lot of things into perspective. And it's been a constant learning experience for myself. Um, having the opportunities I've had at each stop in my career, both as an amateur player and as a professional player and coach um, has allowed me to continue to learn and grow with the game and the players over the past 25 to 30 years. I'm currently um, involved in, in, in running a number of academies. Uh, I grew up playing basketball and soccer. I played uh, those sports for 25, 26 years of my life. And uh, I'm just a sports junkie. I just love to compete. I love to play. Um, I remember speaking to my dad um, um, as he was passing on and he just couldn't believe that I was able to do what I was doing, which was being able to coach and play games for a living. And uh, again, just extremely fortunate. Continuing to evolve with the game and working with all athletes, both boys and girls. I'm actively now working with preschoolers up to uh, Olympians. I'm confident I'm the individual to continue the upward movement of the women's volleyball program here at the University of New Brunswick. So that's pretty much a snippet of who I am um, when it comes to sports anyways. I will probably learn a little bit more uh, about myself through this town hall. Uh, but what I really look forward to is being able to meet you all in, per, uh, in person sometime down the road, wherever that may be, if it's in Fredericton or in Ontario or Alberta or British Columbia, wherever it may be, I welcome those talks. Um, so getting into a little bit, uh, I know there were some questions regarding, you know, and probably there will be some questions regarding my vision, my plan for the program, my philosophy, all those things. Um, and again, it's, it's tough for me to comment on how we compare to other teams in our conference without never seeing most of our athletes play or train um, or other programs or teams in our conference. I've been super lucky to be able to watch, like I mentioned, some of the, some of the training that uh, Coach K has been able to, to run over the past number of years, uh, sorry, over the past number of uh, weeks on FaceTime. I mean, I do have high expectations for our athletes. Um, they're training hard, they're working hard. I've been able to chime in and try and give them um, some tips along with what KO has been giving them. And how they're able to take those things tells me a lot about uh, um, how accepting and how understanding and how open they are to coaching, which is a huge positive. Um, the expectations that I have are going to be clear and very evident from, from, from the early stages. Uh, sometimes the greatest challenge is keeping those expectations realistic and, and attainable. Over the past couple of years, the program has improved quite a bit results-wise anyways with what Coach Biggs has done. And what we have to understand that that change in leadership, with change in leadership, sometimes comes with change in performance. Sometimes good, sometimes taking a step back as much as it is a cliche, taking a step back to take a couple steps forward is needed and sometimes happens. Um, but we must realize that when this team played its last meaningful matches pre-pandemic, the team has changed and changed dramatically. Four starters have graduated, one starter rec recovering from knee surgery, one starter graduated and then decided to come back, luckily for us. So um, a very, very different looking team than what you would have last seen on the floor. Um, also just taking into consideration that uh, 10 of our 19 athletes named in the previous slides are in varying years of their degree. So they're at various different years of schooling. But out of those, 10 of those athletes um, are in their first year of eligibility at the youth sports level. And this is not lost on me. Okay, patience is gonna have to be there for sure. Uh, and experience has very much to do with success. Um, regardless, I know that my expectations this year to compete for an AUS, sorry, my expectations for this year is to compete for an AUS championship. 
It's the only thing that I know. It's the only thing that I want to do. An intern will give us an opportunity at a U Sports uh, at a, at a U Sports National Championship. Now again, um, how does this happen? When you only have two players that have been on the floor full time and uh, your roster lacks uh, a number of experience. Um, in speaking with the, the, the athletes, um, a lot have mentioned winning and wanting to win and winning a banner um, and are excited to do so. Understanding, I, I think that the most important thing is understanding what it takes to do this and uh, how you strive towards it. So winning definitely isn't everything, but it's like, it's, it's definitely a process. We've all heard that before. Um, this, but what it means is that kind of understanding what it takes means doing everything that we can do, okay? Everything that we can do to be the best that we can be, be that in the gym, in the weight room, taking care of yourself physically, healthy eating habits, sleep habits, um, you have to be able to hold people accountable. And for you to be able to do, you have to be doing these things yourself to be able to hold others accountable. And when you do this, this raises the level of the entire group. This is where the culture is created. And I know people kind of are bouncing around this culture word. It's a major clog in a lot of, in a lot of teams and a lot of programs. And, um, you know, these expectations and following and holding each other to a higher standard is where this culture is created. And for me, culture, culture has to do with commitment, loyalty, and work ethic. And the good thing about these things is all three of these things have nothing to do with skill. It has everything to do with choice. It has to do with how, how driven you are, how motivated you are, and how much you want to achieve your, your dreams and your ultimate goals. We will all be at different levels of commitment in these aspects of being the best we can be. Some, are, some, some of the athletes are gonna be more athletic, some are more driven in the classroom. Um, some even compete harder. What we have to work on are the points that, that were mentioned, okay? The things that don't come easy to us, that aren't natural in us. When we challenge ourselves to uh, being, uh, when we challenge ourselves when we're being uncomfortable and when we're not feeling um, our best, um, the, that's, that's when we make our, our greatest strides and overcome our weaknesses and achieve great things. These are all things that we must understand and, res and respect about one another for us to understand what we're capable of and then going out and doing it. I love people with dreams. I love people with dreams. I just love it. I love hearing what they want to do. And I love setting out there because as soon as they, as soon as they put something out there, you can hold them to that. And, um, you know, again, one thing that I kind of mentioned earlier is one of my major goals is for the athlete to become comfortable being uncomfortable that makes sense to you the expectations that i put on the athletes come with major responsibility and that's not lost on me as well but at the same time with that responsibility come a lot of perks as well i believe that a student athlete provides value to the university and the university community as a whole i believe this is the belief of not only the athletics department at the university of new brunswick but of the, of, of the university academia. It means the world to me when I speak to our current Reds volleyball athletes and obviously the ones from Fredericton and they've told me themselves that they grew up dreaming of being um, a UNB Red and wearing the uniform. It's what it's all about to me. It's what it's all about. Having dreams and fulfilling them. And what's even better is when things happen along the way that you never could have dreamed of. It's pretty cool. I've seen it happen firsthand. I've been able to experience it. And as a coach, again, seeing, seeing athletes achieve the goals that they've set out to do um, is more amazing than anything that I ever accomplished as an athlete. The other major goal I have for athletes is to create leaders, leaders in our sport, leaders in our community, leaders in their lives, okay? Having spent time with the women's national team on a full-time basis, I've not only been able to see the inner workings of the national team sport on the women's side in our country, but also been inspired by the dedication and overall ability of these athletes. We and I must continue to empower these women and help them gain the tools to have success, not only athletically, but academically and as they move on in their lives. Creating a bond between them, a sisterhood, that I know many of you that are on this that are in this town hall understand and can relate to. 
Um, one thing I forgot to mention at the beginning was I wanted to thank Coach Jeff Maybe, Coach um, Kim Kolpitz, and KO, Coach K, Kristen O'Brien for the work that they've put in since, uh, since uh, Christy left, Coach Biggs left in, uh, in December. Um, this was a very unique and uh, challenging uh, year for, for all of us, but uh, more for the athlete, not being able to play and being able to train full time. And they did a remarkable job um, with the athletes and it has not gone, gone unnoticed. So I'll have some other things to add in closing, but um, hopefully I didn't ramble on too much for you. And uh, um, if there are any questions, I'd just like to open it up to uh, everyone out there. If you want, uh, you can you can uh, change to uh, change your view to ca uh, gallery screen, and if you want, you can also uh, unmute yourself or cue uh, a question in the in the queue if you'd like, and we'll kind of go from there. But hi, Coach. Hi. Hi. I have a for you as a UMB alumni and um, an alumni of the volleyball program. When I consider um, down the road providing, um, you know, some financial contribution to the, the volleyball program, um, something that's very important to me is the local talent. And I'm very impressed with the Fredericton Grassroots Program and how amazing some of these volleyball players that they develop end up but my disappointment is over the past number of years our top recruits out of Fredericton end up leaving the province and I'm just wondering if you have a plan to um, go after those Fredericton athletes more than than others have been previously. Yeah it's an excellent question and that was probably my first comment to um, Director of Athletics John Richards when I was um, offered the position and accepted the position and he forwarded on the information and the history of some of the past recruits and where they're playing. And I said, like, this cannot happen. Uh, those are my first comments. And, and I didn't ask why, um, but building relationships is the first thing that you have to do and that's going to be a major goal and from all that i've heard um, in regards to the uh, club system and the volleyball community in fredericton um, next to the unb current players and uh, program that's going to be my major number one goal is building those relationships with those athletes and and uh, understanding what they want to accomplish and 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 convincing them that they don't have to go elsewhere to accomplish those goals and that we are creating champions and that we are going to create a championship program here in Fredericton. So um, that is a, a fair, fair question. And um, what it comes down to is building relationships and understanding what they want and uh, them getting to know you and, or sorry, them getting to know me and understanding what I'm about. Um, I'm, I'm an extremely passionate person. And um, those things are important. But, and again, I, you know, I know that we have quite a few, we don't have one Fredericton recruit this, this, this season. They're all from across the country. A um, couple from, from, from Maritimes being from Nova, Nova Scotia, but uh, um, that's going to be a number one goal is to keep the local talent local. So it's extremely upsetting to me. And unfortunate, I think that players have gone elsewhere, but for me, um, it's unfortunate those athletes have left, but for me right now, it's motivating for this team moving forward. Thank you. There were there there was another question on the on the queue, and I maybe maybe Marcy could 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 look at the reply. I know that one had to do with with team culture, and I did kind of mention that. Another one was on uh, player positioning and kind of systems and whatnot. Um, there are a couple athletes on this call, which is great, um, and I know that maybe there are some that have uh, been at a practice that I have kind of chimed in at. I'm an extremely technical coach. And uh, I feel that 
um, we can make up for maybe some of the size restrictions that we have right now in the way that we play. We're going to be a tough defensive team to play. We're going to play an uh, extremely fast offensive system. And what I've seen, we have athletic athletes. Um, and so that's going to be a major thing to look for, uh, forward to and to look for as you're watching this year's team and as the, as, as the team uh, grows over the years. Um, and again, I'm not one who um, gets dictated uh, the way that we play. I, um, I don't follow the trends in volleyball. If it's like everybody's playing high, so we got to go high or everybody's playing quick, so we got to go quick. I'm going to play to our strengths. Um, so to that point, I'm not sure where we're at, but the question was, are you, do you play your libero in five? Do you play your libero in six? We're going to play to our, our players' strengths. And if the majority of the balls are being hit to certain areas, we're going to put our best defender in there. Um, hopefully somebody who's going to be able to pass the ball, dig the ball, and then attack the ball right after. Obviously, liberos can attack, but at the same time, I have high expectations for our liberos. Um, I, have, I have high expectations for all of our athletes. And, and um, so again, working hard on defense, um, there's going to be some skin lost, I'm sure, in a good way. Anyone? <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Allison here from PEI, uh, former player as well. Uh, yeah, Allison, I remember, yeah. Yeah, I do some coaching on PEI now, I'm back in the Maritimes, and I know quite a few girls have UMB on their minds as well, as young as U14 out here. And I'm just wondering, as um, they want to start approaching you, would you rather they go to you directly or would you rather a coach I'll contact you first and then introduce the player or how would you like us to go about bringing yeah. these athletes to you? Great question, Allison. Yeah, I remember your question that you put in and, and, and the email that you sent me earlier this year. Mm -hmm. um, I think that if we can all network together, you know, um, as much as we, as much as we like the athlete to take the initiative to contact, I think that any little push that you can give them or any little heads up, um, again, I'm going to be in the Maritimes full time and I'm going to be, I want to, I want to leave no stone unturned in regards to what's out there. And I know that, you know, for the past eight, nine years, you've had a school in Nova Scotia, Dalhousie, that has, uh, that has been the power of the AUS and that has had a lot of success and has had, and has, uh, for the most part, maybe gotten the majority of the recruits. And I think that, um, again, all it does is motivate me. Um, it's nothing new to me. Um, I've, I've, I've had to start and build up a program from, from scratch before. And, I'm not, and we're not there uh, by no means. I think just a couple pieces here and there. But, but to not kid yourself, that, that uh, a very important piece here and there can really make the difference. So to answer your question, um, athletes contacting is great. Um, I'll be there. Uh, at my first, like if, like when I'm, I'm arriving on July 2nd and we start camps on July 5th, uh, but those following weeks and thereafter, if, if the bubble's open, I want to be traveling. I want to be meeting these athletes. I want to be getting them in the gym if it's allowed and um, I'm all for it. So uh, do not feel like you're going to bombard me at all with emails or with uh, prospective athletes. It's my job. It's what I love to do. And um, I want to make us the best we can be. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Allison. Hi, Coach Shake. I'm Natasha Dubay. I'm with the Spartans Volleyball Club here in Fredericton. Uh, mm -hmm. We're very proud. We've got three athletes currently on the UNB team, and you know, hopefully, we will get some more uh, uh, in the, in the forthcoming years. Um, I did send in a question via uh, the registration link, and I was wondering if you um, had anything to say about the role you intend to play linking up with the club teams and the school teams in the city to go a bit with what Megan said earlier, um, to try to get as many uh, athletes in Fredericton uh, on the radar to, to get on, on the UNB team in, in the future. So, I mean, we obviously welcome you in our gyms at any point, but I wondered if you, with your past experiences in BC and Alberta, 
and, and the like have already ideas in place of what you'd like to do with the structure that currently exists in Fredericton? Yeah, great, great question. Um, I think that, you know, again, when I, when I was first offered the position, I first accepted the position, uh, my first kind of uh, contacts were to, were to current athletes. Then they were to prospective athletes who are recruits. And my next question was to the volleyball community. And I, I shouldn't say the volleyball community because I haven't reached out to anybody in Fredericton, but I went through the men's coach, Dan McMorn, who I know very well in regards to what do we, like when is our high school tournament? When, what camps can we run? Like how, how, how visual can we be? How, like, I wanna be involved. So to answer your question, um, I probably shouldn't kind of say this, but like, I can't say no. So if you ask me to come out, I'm gonna be there. Like if you need me to, to hit down balls or to come take a look at somebody or to be at games, that's what I do. That's what I'm gonna be, be there for. And, and I, I really do feel that all that I've heard is how strong and how, um, uh, how strong the volleyball community is in Fredericton. And I, I literally cannot wait to get out there to experience this. And, and as that is my number one priority to kind of build that relationship. And again, what I mentioned in my talk earlier was, you know, when I'm talking to probably some of your athletes from your program and the Burn sisters and, and, and uh, you know, when they say to me that, you know, they went to games when they were younger and, you know, they're, they dreamed of like being those girls on the floor. You know, and to me, that's what I was like when I was a kid growing up. I wanted, you know, growing up in Brandon, we didn't have volleyball at the time. We had, you know, the, the men's basketball team who, who won national championships. And, and, I, and I wanted a ring. I wanted a ring. And, and I was able to get five of them as a player and as a coach. And I, I'm, I'm extremely proud of that. But, but that's what it's about. And, uh, and it's about that journey. And, you know, so sharing those experiences are one part, but like following that dream and, and being able to play a role in in the in the dream for those athletes is is what my role is now, and 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 what our athletes have to understand as well. So, it's not only going to be me that's going to be giving back. Um, I want to be in the community. I want to be in the community with our with our with, with our athletes um, running running camps. You know, I want to not even running camps, just running um, um, taking taking an elementary class from a PE teacher for morning and for them to be able to take notes as to what we're doing and what we're teaching and what we're saying and those types of things. Because I think that's what starts that, that fire beneath us is, is, is when we experience something like that. And they kind of remember that, oh, I remember 10 years ago when so-and-so came to our gym and, and how hard they spiked or that I dug them or whatever. So I think that's what it's all about. So I'm there, I'm going to be there and uh, I can't wait. Thank you so much for that. And obviously what I get out of that is that you don't say no very often, so <laughs> it will be remembered. Uh, but no, we do look uh, here at, at Spartans and, and you know, there's a multitude of clubs in, in Fredericton actually. So I'm sure we all look forward to working with you. So welcome. Awesome, thank you very much. So Richard, there's a couple of questions that were in on the registration. So the first one um, is what are your goals and expectations for this first season for the team? sent in by Aaron Crossland, who I might add is also the women's volleyball on the video that we started that we all saw in the beginning. The movie star, yes. The movie star, that's right. Uh, I also I also received an email, a welcome email from, from her as well. So thank you very much for that. I think I kind of touched on it, you know, in in not knowing, in not knowing um, all the players, uh, the returners, the newcomers, and not knowing the landscape, it's tough for me to gauge. But even after I said that, when I spoke earlier, my goal is to compete. And when you compete the way that I want us to compete, we're going to have results. And when you have results, um, you take steps forward. Um, and uh, it's going to be a learning year for all of us. Uh, but I have also seen young teams achieve great things. So I know that this team was in the AUS um, semifinal when they, in the, in the pre-pandemic. Um, and they were, again, they were tied with the other two teams. So they easily could have been in the final. Um, 
So I think that we have the opportunity. I'm confident in myself and I'm confident in what I've seen from the players so far in their work ethic. And that makes up for a lot. And so I want to be competing for that banner, for that AUS banner. And then from there, anything can happen. You win that banner and you're going to nationals and you can go from whatever. And, and some people may think that that's crazy. Some people maybe expect that. Great. But I know that it's a process. I know it's not easy. And uh, as I mentioned, I think our athletes have, have, have used the word winning and want to win fairly loosely because everybody wants to do it. But understanding what we have to do to do those things is the most important thing. And it is a process. And I want to help them with that. Perfect. Um, and another one uh, that was sent in uh, from Robert, Robin Anderson was, uh, what is your philosophy on building team culture? And is it something that happens naturally or does it need to be curated? And I think I touched on that. I think, um, I believe that it, it comes down to the attitudes of everyone. And as I mentioned, um, providing the example, I have to provide an example. And each one of our athletes has to provide an example, not only to their fellow teammates, but to the university community and the city of Fredericton. And that, that culture becomes pretty evident in regards to what you're known for in the community and, in, and, and within the university. And so, and again, I think that those things, as I mentioned, have very little to do with skill. You know, it has to do with commitment, loyalty, and hard work. And those things are a choice. And um, you're not gonna be able to give your best all the time, but you gotta give what you can give and, and we gotta help and support each other. But that culture, is probably introduced and presented through my beliefs, but it's carried on and it's nurtured and it's grown from within. And it's up to the athletes for sure. Um, but definitely I have a major part of that. And that's, that's what's so exciting. Like that's what's so exciting for me to not know what we have and to be able to understand and realize that and to be able to move forward with it. Terrific. If anybody else has any other questions, either feel free to uh, show us yourselves or turn off your turn on your mics or or whatnot. But if uh, we'll give you a couple of minutes, and then if not, we'll uh, we'll sign off. Uh, hi, Coach uh, Don McKay. I'm uh, with the St. Thomas uh, Women's Volleyball Program, so uh, uh -huh. we'll we'll get a chance to definitely meet. Uh, currently, I'm in Thunder Bay, uh, waiting for uh, the second our second grandchild uh, be to be born uh, any day now. And, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to get back. I uh, love uh, hearing you speak. The passion uh, is definitely evident and uh, I'm sure we will, we'll, uh, we'll have a great partnership uh, for many years. Awesome, Don. Thanks very much for chiming in and thanks for your email earlier as well. And yeah, I look forward to, to, uh, to meeting you and building the relationships from there. And congratulations on uh, the birth of your, your grandchild. That's exciting, especially during this time. I'm glad you're able to be there. Yeah, it's, it, it's, been, it's been a wild ride. Let me tell you. I bet. <laughs> Anyone else? This is not typically a quiet group. <laughs> Again, I'm... I'm uh, if you're more comfortable communicating individually through via phone or via email, feel free to send me a message or give me a call. Uh, my number, I, I don't know if my number's on the closing slide or not, but if it isn't, I can include it or it can be sent out, but it's in my signature. It's on the website. So feel free to call. And um, yeah. Okay. Guess okay. we wrap it up. So that, okay. So in, in closing, I just have a couple things to, to mention. Um, uh, again, thanks everybody for being here. It's been, it's been, it's been neat for me. It's been new for me to kind of in this, uh, in this forum to kind of work this way, but uh, I've uh, gotten a little bit more comfortable throughout. So maybe this is the, the first of many of these that we'll be able to do. Um, in closing, I want to kind of pull back and, and, and just be even a little more serious and, and just kind of express to you that I, that I do not take the position that I'm in lightly or for granted. 
I have the responsibility to many people, to John Richards, to the university, to the alumni, the supporters, the donors, the parents and the families. But the group that I am most responsible for is the athletes and the University of uh, New Brunswick's women's volleyball team. And for this, I, I'm extremely grateful and proud and humbled. And again, just in closing, maybe maybe my siblings were right. Maybe I am spoiled because I'm in this position and I, I feel extremely lucky for it. So thanks again to all of you for attending. Thanks to everyone from UNB and the Reds family who's not only made this evening possible, but helped in making the transition for me to New Brunswick and UNB, such a welcoming one. So thanks everyone, thanks for coming.